Hello everybody, today uh, we got a 10 kW heater from a customer uh, that is saying uh, that the heater will only work when the engine coolant is warm already uh, and it has been heated up by the engine so uh, it won't start with, with the cold antifreeze uh, the customer is saying that he already changed the temperature sensors and uh, he's still having this problem. So, um, first we will be hooking up the heater to the diagnostics and see exactly what is happening and read out the temperature sensor values to see, um, to see the problem. So the heater is uh, connected and fixed to the test bench. Um, as you can see, I have uh, connected everything, um, including the exhaust, also the air intake uh, silencer, also connected the water hoses to the heater, uh, but I have not opened up the water valves yet just in case uh, the heater won't start and uh, I will have to take it down again. You can also see the fuel pump is connected. Also we have a really big uh, water tank here. The other thing you can see in this video, this black piece is a 30 kilowatt big water heater heat exchanger and uh, we'll be using this to test uh, big water heaters in our next videos. I have also connected the battery and um, everything is connected to the EasyScan diagnostic interface. So get, getting on with uh, the diagnostics uh, we will select the water heater menu, drop down menu and from here we will select Hydronic M2 because this is uh, the heater we are working with. After this we'll select diagnostics and we'll wait for the connection to be established between the heater and the interface. Here we can uh, see what kind of heater we are working, working with. Actually it's a 12 kW heater. Uh, we can see the operating hours uh, which we see it's not really an old and uh, well, the heater is old, but it's not uh, really so used as we may think. Reading out the fault codes um, tells us uh, what errors do we have, uh, what uh, active errors and uh, what errors also in the memory. From this software we also can create a report for the customer. For this we will select report. As we can see we have the previous uh, report here so we need to delete that and uh, we will write uh, all the fault codes and operating hours and everything uh, to this file so the customer can see what problems the heater had before we repaired it. As you can see we have two errors and one is consistent, one cannot be delighted, it's 60 which tells us that the water sensor is interrupted all, even though it has been changed. For the error code 25 we can see that um, there are some problems on the diagnostic uh, wire of this heater but uh, probably this is something that the customer has done when trying to read out the errors. Maybe he made a short circuit or disconnected the diagnostic line while the heater was running or something like that. So we delete the errors after logging them in the report file and uh, we will head on to the measured values tab to see uh, what temperatures uh, the sensors are showing in real time. Here we can see that the software is uh, showing a lot of parameters uh, and also uh, the ones we are interested in, so we'll deselect all, all these and only select the 
sensors that we know we have a problem with and immediately we can see that um, the control sensor is showing minus 22 degrees and the overheating sensor 12 degrees so this difference actually does not exist and um, also we can see that uh, this error will uh, come back even after we delete it so uh, we know we have some kind of uh, problem here so we will start to open up the heater to see if uh, anything obvious uh, comes to our attention as for what for why uh, this uh, error is reported maybe the customer didn't connect some wires uh, correctly or uh, maybe a wire is uh, touching the case of the heater and uh, this is what is causing our problems after a little visual inspection of the heater um, I could I could not find anything that uh, is obvious and um, it, that the heater should show this fault so um, I had the idea um, to not open the heater any further and um, just connect a new ECU to this uh, unit as it is and uh, check out uh, the diagnostics and see if um, the fault is uh, corrected. So I just plugged in a new ECU to the old heater and um, connected everything up, the water pump, also the fuel pump, so um, we can test. Um, we can test for errors and see if uh, the 60 code is gone. Also, here in this video, I actually noticed that uh, the old ECU was opened up, something that um, we never do. We never uh, attempt to fix these ECUs because um, it's just not recommended. So, going back to the diagnostics. Uh, we can um, see from the start that um, the control sensor value has changed and um, actually it's showing now 15 degrees so um, I believe that uh, this is our problem and uh, we will have to give the customer the good news so uh, let's see if he decides to repair it or not here uh, we made a short test and uh, attempted to start the heater and um, as you can see the pump is running also the fuel pump starts ticking so um, this tells us that uh, for sure the problem is in the ECU so after giving the customer the bad news um, he actually decided to swap the, the ECU and uh, repair the heater as he needs it. So we will start by taking down the top case of this heater and uh, this is a really tricky operation mainly if the heater was in a really warm location uh, then this uh, top part can become really fragile and almost uh, every time you break it but in this case it's already broken so uh, I just have to take care uh, not to break it uh, even further because right now uh, I don't have this uh, top uh, cap to change it and uh, this is something that um, we will send out to the customer after we receive it and uh, he will change it on its own. So after taking the <coughs> casing off, um, it's a matter of disconnecting uh, the wires from the connector and for this uh, you must have uh, a special tool so uh, you can uh, pull out the pins from the connector or else uh, it's uh, really hard and the only option you have is to cut and uh, then uh, make back the connections. 
After disconnecting the wires from the connector, it's uh, really a straightforward procedure to uh, open up the heater. In this case, um, I have taken out uh, all the glow pins also, and uh, I've decided to change the two glow pin screens as um, these were already a little bit uh, dirty and it makes no sense uh, to put put everything back together and not change these two uh, relatively cheap spare parts. So from here it's a relatively easy procedure to put everything back together uh, exactly as we taken them apart and um, connecting all the wires, everything uh, back to the connector and uh, getting ready to test the heater and um, also see if it's uh, running correctly. So we have everything uh, back on the bench, we have uh, reconnected everything, also <coughs> this time I op opened up the water valves because I was pretty confident that uh, the unit should work now. So after a short self-test and uh, writing that to the report file, we can see that um, <coughs> Everything is showing up correctly, the control and uh, overheating sensor show about the same value and uh, the heater should be starting now. We will be logging these two sensors for the period that the heater is running um, <clears throat> to see how the, their values change over time and uh, if uh, everything is repaired and if anything suspicious appears at these uh, temperature sensors. So the heater is running, everything is um, everything sounds fine, the pump and everything, the water is heating up as uh, we can see in this uh, in this uh, diagram we ran the heater for about 20 minutes um, and everything is working fine. The spike in the diagram is um, is shown because uh, I was trying uh, to manually close a water valve to see what the heater is doing. This is why we have a temperature spike and the heater immediately started uh, regulating and switching back to a lower power. So all this being done, uh, we consider this a successful repair and um, we will sending back we will be sending back the heater to the customer and uh, let's hope that uh, everything will run also fine on their system so thank you for watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more heater repairs i believe in our next video we'll be repairing uh, 30 kilowatt heater big bus heaters and um, if you are interested in this uh, don't forget to check back so see you guys next time goodbye